Last one, are we ready? Yeah. August 4, 2014, I was told by a doctor that I was very lucky to be alive. Now that I have your attention, my name is Jonathan Lopes. How are you? <laughs> this is the photo of me being hit by a truck driver's side, T-boned, and a literal mistimed red light changed the trajectory of my academic, professional, and personal life. But for a moment, let's actually rewind a bit. As I said, my name is Jonathan Lopes, commonly mispronounced and misspelled as Lopez, and I was born and raised in New York Junior, that being New Jersey, specifically Newark, New Jersey. The proud son of Portuguese immigrants, therefore I am proudly a first-generation college graduate and first-generation U.S. citizen. As I grew up, I actually attended Phillipsburg High School after my parents got their literal and uh, proverbial big break. And during my time at Phillipsburg High School, I learned the important lesson of failure, hence our first red light. That failure came in the form of, I'm not very good at math, and I needed to learn how to get better at math. Therefore, my first dose of reality was in the form of, I needed to build infrastructure, I needed that mentorship. As a result of actual mentorship and the ability to go beyond my level of convenience, graduated high school, attended Raritan Valley Community College, as well as Ramapo College of New Jersey for my associate's degree, as well as my bachelor's degree, respectively. I was obsessed with becoming a success and honoring my parents' name. I became an orientation leader, resident assistant, peer educator, six classes, internships, et cetera, et cetera. However, that does come at a price. But before we get to that, let's highlight some of the actual positives. During that time there, I'm starting to develop my craft, that being, being in the human experience. I'm in the business of people. As a result of focusing so much on paying it forward and banking on all these opportunities, I lose sight of my foundation, which is the academics. I am a student first, then worker, student first, then leader. Failed a college class, I did not graduate in four years, I graduated in four and a half. I was very humbled to be in my local library finding that out. However, picked myself up, honored the mentorship that I started receiving, as well as all the anecdotes and levels of support from my undergraduate education. But there was another missing piece. That was taking the academic theory and applying it with the real world practice. And these two books were the first books that I ever read, Bossy Pants by Tina Fey, My Future Wife, and Randy Posh's Last Lecture, who is the late great Carnegie Mellon professor. And they focused on the idea of advocacy as well as being in the intimate moments of human connection. As a result of reading, as well as immersing myself in opportunities, I was able to have more and more opportunities. I got placed on the wall of the new student center in my community college. I led my graduation for my bachelor's degree, but I, the red light still comes up. What is the next phase of my life? Is it going to be straight up workplace or advancing my curriculum and going for a graduate school? And do I still believe in myself, or am I making up for lost time by being first generation? I ended up attending Ryder University for my master's degree in education in Trenton, New Jersey. I was able to obtain a graduate internship that allowed me to fund my program, and that's where I became on the front lines working with students on a literal day-to-day -day basis, seeing everyone that, as I like to say, potential that needs to be polished. However, Red lights do come. Detours have to be made. You do not get to live a life of green lights. During my graduate school process, I ended up breaking up with my first serious girlfriend. We also shared a dog. I was struggling with the workload that graduate school presents to myself, and this is also where that car accident took place. And one of the first books that I read cover to cover, especially as I was transitioning to a graduate student, was Stephen Covey's international bestseller, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, in which you're focusing on the ability to not only be an advocate, but work on yourself and build that foundation based on values and what are you actually trying to focus on. As a result, on the left-hand side, you see one of the first photos once I returned from my car accident, looking gorgeous like Justin Timberlake suit and tie. And on the right-hand side, you saw me seconds away from bear-hugging the ever-living hell out of the president during my master's ceremony. 
Even more so, I was able to be profiled in their marketing campaign for all of the university for specifically their master's prospective student population. And that to me was wonderful because it's going to showcase that I'm doing it for the right reasons. I'm trying to better myself in order to pay it forward. Now this actually touches on the main aspect of my talk today, which is the idea that people think success is the left-hand side, A to B, a linear path. However, inevitably life will prevent you a roadblock in which you have to change course, and that is your right-hand side. It is no longer linear. On the left-hand side, you have me as a gorgeous child who was rejected from being on Gerber. And on the right-hand side, you have Jonathan Lopes who accomplished one of his lifelong legitimate dreams, which is becoming a TED speaker. Thank you very much, I appreciate that woo. <laughs> now then, as we transition, I actually wanna make sure that as I finish this talk, I am acknowledging who helped me build the pillars of my success. These are the people that over the last full decade have been my support system. Some of them are friends, some of them are colleagues, some of them are special people in my intimate life. And these were people that helped lay the foundation, therefore, I could be the next wave of talent. I could be the next wave of potential. Now. This actually comes full circle. I get to proudly return to my roots of community college. It is not 13th and 14th grade. It is an opportunity for people, whether it's family obligation, work obligations, or, men or mental, physical, uh, medical situations, actually pursue an education at a relatively lower cost and still make their voice happen. And I, I wanna end this talk on the best way possible. You have now seen 100 total speakers present for this lovely event, and you saw three previous speakers. We were the past. The people on the previous slide were the future. Who are you gonna be with in their drive to success? Thank you very much.